Welcome back to my channel, Beautiful Boutique Babes, here on Sharon's Nail Boutique. If you're new here and you haven't decided to subscribe yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, hit that like button and notification bell so you could be reminded every time I upload. Now, I redid my nails using my Unajella pre-pinched coffin tips. And I also redid them using the Lazy Girl kit. Now, I did not do the Lazy Girl method. However, I did go in through these things and demonstrate how I would do my nails typically like on a tip set. I didn't really, I wasn't crazy about how my nails came out with the Lazy Girl method. I'm not saying it doesn't work, it does work. It just is a little bit more messy than I like to be doing. Um, and I'm just going through and showing you everything once again that I showed you in the unboxing video. Um, I love how cute that sticker is and I just love all the goodies that they gave you in this kit. The slip solution, the extend gel, the top coat, the base coat, everything. And just, I got these forms actually. I ordered these forms off of Amazon. I will leave those in the description box. These are my Unagella pre pinch tips. I freaking swear by these tips. Like these tips, if you don't want like the Super XL or the 3XL ones, get these. So, that's taking forever, so bear with me. Now we move on to the filing, and I'm just using my metal board file that I have, um, the stick, the stick file pieces. This I got off of AliExpress, and I will also leave the link for this in the index description below. So I actually love this file because it's so, you don't have to worry about it bending or breaking. You just peel up the, the file stickers. They're like sandpaper basically. And it's just shaped to the file. And you know, you, I have the 100 and the 180 grit ones. So when I'm done with it, I peel it off and then I set down a new one. I'm going in with the base coat here to I'm either using the base coat or my Burano three-in-1 but either way it's a base gel and I'm using that to glue down my tips I ever since I've learned how to glue down my tips with base gel I don't really go for the glue as much anymore this is the milky white here and I'm using this to create a I think I'm doing an ombre on this now I'm pretty sure I am um, in hindsight, I guess I could have went in with like a little bit less of that white color. I actually really, really like SXC's milky white color. I think it was meant to be like a, just a white, but it actually turned out to be a milky white. And I don't know if they did that purposely and just didn't name it milky white. However, I'm glad that it came out this way because I think milky white in general is perfect for ombre any type of colors that you want. Um, it also makes for a really good marbling color as well. And I really like how, how it looks. It's just very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. It's not super, super bright white. Um, I should have probably pulled a little bit of this product off and just put it on my other nail, but I left it the way it was so I had enough so I had enough uh, color to make it opaque. But I should have pulled off the excess because it was a little bit too thick at the bottom. So just always be mindful of that, ladies and gentlemen. When you're doing, when you're doing your nails, try to make sure that the product is not too thick in certain places, like back here at the cuticle, right? You want it to be flush. That's why you see me going like bit by bit, making sure that that is tucked in and around those edges properly you're going to be turning your brush on certain angles as you're coming to those corners at first i was thinking of doing the french like reverse french but then i was like you know it's a lot right now so i just want to make sure that i get the design on camera and so that's why i just i started doing a full nail of the baby pink spreading it out from side to side and that's you want to also make sure that with poly gel you are patting it out fully because it's possible that if you do not do that that you will have C 
see-through edges or parts that you can still see the tip because it's not covered. So I'm just cleaning in and around the sidewalls and the cuticle area um, after I've cleaned my brush and dipped it into some alcohol. I actually end up using my 70% alcohol instead of using the slip solution. And that's not because I don't like the slip solution. I actually think it works really well honestly um but i just i'm so used to reaching for alcohol to use with poly gel that i it's just something that i'm accustomed to um and i actually like using the alcohol i just feel like i get a better it just works better for me i feel like i guess getting used to, when you get used to anything it's that way but so as you can see here with your cuticle here, you want to make sure because a big mistake that I used to make in the beginning of doing nails was I would I would make it so thin at the cuticle that my free edge would look thick as hell and I'd barely have any product up in that cuticle area thinking that it needed to be super duper thin and then having most of my bulk at the bottom. But that's actually, it's the reverse. You're supposed to have more product up in that center and strength point area thin thinner around the cuticle and sidewalls but most of your bulk should be coming through that center stress point area where your that's where your um apex would be so you want to tuck it in and around and then it's going to come up slightly to that natural apex shape as you can see me doing here and then you're gonna start pulling your product down thinner towards the free edge even though it's thinner it's not super paper thin but it is thinner and less bulkier than what the cuticle area should be looking like the stress point area so I'm going in at the top there with that baby pink over the white and I do end up adding, I believe I end up going in and adding more because I needed more of a stress area on that nail. But first I go on to the ring finger and finish that first. I actually almost made the mistake of sticking my hand in the lamp to cure my pinky and realized, oh my God, I pulled it out real fast because then I realized I had that that glob of poly gel that I put on my ring finger here and I hadn't molded it yet so be careful of that as well so I'm just as you can see I tucked it in in around those edges there in my cuticle area I think I will be adding another small bead just to fill in those translucent areas and you see poly gel for me I love poly gel because I feel like it's so much easier to work with than definitely definitely easier than gel and acrylic and because they're the two combined it's you get the best of both worlds and I just I cannot rave enough about poly gel now obviously there's gonna be products that are better than others so in that case it's awesome just to keep track of which products are best and which don't really work that well that way you can let other people know so they don't make you know that same mistake that's the beauty of sharing products on youtube and demonstrating them for people so that they can see for themselves how well the product works and if they really want to pick it up or not now of course i always leave the links for the products that I use in my videos down in the description index below. So definitely take advantage of those links. This kit I actually picked up for about 20 bucks. Right now I think it's actually $29.99 with 30% off. So you're gonna get a really, really great deal. Um, I also have another unboxing video, another SXC unboxing video. They're glow the the horoscope the horoscope one collection the zodiac one collection either the zodiac one collection or zodiac two but i have both of them i've reviewed i think it was the second one that i reviewed for you all with the libra horoscope in there i think it had scorpio libra 
and a few other ones. So it comes with six horoscopes, and then this one came with six horoscopes. So super excited that I got to unbox that on video for you guys. I love doing these review videos. Um, and that kit I actually picked up, believe it or not, for like 15 or 16 bucks, and I believe it is still on sale for that amount, as well as their pink lovers kit. And that one comes with two color changers, temperature changing colors, two glow ones, which is like a dark pink to a glowing purple, and then the other one is a lighter pink that glows red. And then you get two of the shimmery nude colors, so like a cover pink and I think like a cover nude, but they have shimmer in them. Oh my God, they're so pretty. And each of their kits comes with like glitters. They give you dual forms, they give you uh, paper forms. So there's so many goodies, and I love SXC's brushes. Their brushes are amazing. Like, I really feel like they may be the only poly gel company that I have tried thus far that actually gives you a poly gel brush that's a Kalinsky brush. Brushes seem to be more synthetic than anything else, and I'm not, like, that's not a complaint, that's just, you know, I prefer working with Kalinsky brushes because I feel like they just work more smoothly. It's easier to manage the brush. With synthetic brushes, it's like the hairs are always shedding. They go in multiple different directions sometimes and it, it's difficult to reshape a synthetic brush. Um, that's my experience anyways. I'm not saying that I'm speaking for anybody else. That's just my experience. So after I've done like my S swoop glitter here, I'm using the base coat from this kit to help me lay down these glitters just so I don't have to use like the clear poly gel and make it more bulkier, you know? This is just an easier way. If you do not want to create more thickness to your nail than you need to, I highly recommend just mixing up some glitter with your top coat or base coat, however you want to do it. Whichever one is fine because they're both going to cure the same way. Um, the only difference is, is with the top coat, you're not going to have to, you know, if you were choosing to clean it and not encapsulate. So this is the clear. Obviously, I put way too much down. I end up taking off the excess and moving it over to another nail. But this is me encapsulating the full glitter nail. And I think this is the first time I actually ever used clear from SXE. But let me tell you all, you have to pick up this kit. If you have not tried SXE's poly gel system, you're definitely missing out. And look at how easy I was able to mold that clear. The clear poly gel from SXE is amazing. It's literally, it's so easy to mold. Like it's way easier than the colors, but the colors are just as, as amazing to work with. Um, the clear just glided so effortlessly. It was literally like working with butter. Like, I know people say that about acrylic because of the creaminess and the smoothness, but this was literally like working with butter. It just glided so smoothly and it just, I had no issues with it besides myself using too much, you know, but I recycle the excess and I do reuse the excess, so have no fear. You will not be seeing any nail products on this channel anyways, going to an early death. Let's see what I do with it. Cause I do end up doing something on that middle nail, see? So I'm what I'm doing here is I am mixing the glitters into that clear. So when you do go about wanting to do that, all you see me here doing is just picking up the glitters and like pushing it into that clear poly gel and then molding it in and around the nail and it just mixes together so nicely. It really does. It, it wasn't difficult. Like I didn't have to squirt some out on a thing and mix it all together before I put it down on the nail. No, I just literally, I, I put some clear on the nail from the excess from the other nail now I pulled it off, I pulled the excess off and put it onto this nail and dipped my damp brush 
into that glitter and started pushing them into the clear poly gel. That's all you have to do. It does not have to be a difficult process. We're supposed to be working smarter, not harder. <laughs> Look at me, I was about to say the other part. I was about to say it backwards. Working harder, not smarter. Doi. Okay, so I definitely probably used a little too much here as well, but with this nail, I'm actually going in over that glass tip uh, faded area that I did because I wanted to do a glitter baby boomer. So some might say glitter fade, but I only refer to it as a glitter fade when the glitter comes up over the color and is faded. Whereas when the color comes over the glitter, it would still be, you know, an ombre, but instead it's a glitter ombre. So here I'm adding another bead of the baby pink poly gel up to that cuticle area on the thumb because it lit, it needed it. It was way too see-through in certain areas and it needed more color. So, and the shape needed to be perfected and my strength point and everything put into place. So I'm just being extra careful, cautious around the skin, making sure that I'm not getting any excess product on the skin because if you do, it will cause lifting, absolutely. So just make, make sure that you are cleaning up around those edges before you put it into cure. And if you do not remember to do that before you cure, when it comes out of the lamp and you notice it, Make sure when you're filing that you get those pieces that are stuck onto the skin off because that will cause lifting over time and for your nail to come off. So, and that's not fun. So now I'm using those silver shredded pieces from the kit and using the glitter on my thumb as well before I encapsulate it with the clear. And I'm just using those shredded pieces of foil and dotting those around the thumbnail after I've done the glitter. I think it actually looked really, really dope the way it came out, honestly. And I end up putting some on that middle finger as well. And I already have the sticky surface because what I do is when my nails come out, if they're not encapsulated yet, I'll leave it like that just in case I wanna stick some glitters onto it or something. If not, I'll just go right in on that tacky layer with my clear poly gel. It's always, I, in my opinion anyways, if you're gonna encapsulate it anyways, don't clean the surface because that'll help the next product stick there easier. So now I'm just perfecting the cuticle area and the sidewall area and making sure that I'm being as cautious and clean as possible, dipping my brush into my alcohol when I need to, when it's getting too dry or sticky. Um, and be mindful of dabbing your brush on your towel because you don't want too much alcohol on your product because one thing I've noticed when you use too much of it, it'll make the product start to sweat and you'll see like the beads of liquid kind of on the surface of the poly gel. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that before. If you have, leave it in the comments what was your worst experience with poly gel um and what was your best experience like how long did it take you to perfect your poly gel method and was this easier for you than acrylic or gel was i know for me especially doing my non-dominant like using my non-dominant hand that definitely the poly gel itself makes it easier to use both hands because the poly gel you're not going to have to worry about chasing it all over the nail because it's you know leaking into the sidewalls or anything like that and also you don't have to worry about it setting up too quickly because you weren't able to get your shape right you know so a lot of it is and a lot of it too is like second guessing your work and being over you know like overly doing things in the beginning of doing nails for me like I was telling you I used to file or lay my acrylic so thin up at that cuticle area that my nails looked way off like the shape of them was off it would look like there was way more product at the free edge 
and barely any up at that cuticle area so it made it look like a duck flare tip or like bell bottoms because there's like nothing at the top and a whole bunch of product at the bottom so it's like all flared out and wide and then there's nothing up at the top area it's just it was hideous and when I look back at my work I'm like what the fuck was I thinking excuse my language but yeah so I after I encapsulate this nail I you know I pull off the excess so a little bit was wasted but you know, I really, really like how these came out. I'll work on filing them in a moment. But I'm going to leave you all here because I'm just going and showing you, you know, everything I use. And I'm just using my tapered bit from Wilson on AliExpress. I will also leave the links for that as well. I swear by this company. Their bits are amazing and extremely affordable. So everything you see me using as well, I've bought and paid for with my own money. Nothing here was sent to me for free or anything like that. If I am doing one of those videos, I will always let you know in the beginning. Um, this is an un, you know, my last one being an unboxing video. It was just an unboxing with you all. It wasn't sent to me for free or anything like that. But I'll always specify if that's the case. So um, I'm hoping that we could get big enough here where we can start getting sponsors and, and companies to make products for myself. And that way I could get them out to you guys for very affordable prices because that's one thing I've noticed in the community of doing nails. Like people put out great products, yes, but their prices are sometimes like too expensive, you know, quite honestly. And I know things could be expensive to make as well. So hopefully when I get if I get to that point I'm hoping that I can that I'll be able to put out products that are not only great quality but also extremely affordable so I'll yep I'll leave you guys here now I love all you beautiful boutique babes so so much and I will see you soon actually because I have another video coming up very shortly it is the unboxing of the zodiac one kit from sxt so be on the lookout for that and also do not forget we have the thousand person subby the thousand subby giveaway coming up and i'm gonna be putting a secret word hidden throughout my video so be on the lookout or have your ears open for that because if you miss it nobody's gonna win and i'm giving out gift cards so i'm gonna have three winners i'm gonna have two winners the first two winners First place and second place are going to get gift cards. Obviously, the first place winner will get more, probably like a $50 gift card. The second place winner will probably get like a $35 or $40 gift card. And the third place winner will probably get like a $25 gift card or a bunch of nail goodies. So um, I may just let you all choose, like if you want nail stuff or you want a gift card. But with the gift card, you could just buy your own nail stuff and pick out what you want. So yeah i'm gonna leave y'all here and remember don't forget to you know be listening out for that information and i love you all so much please don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you do not mind i love you boutique bays see y'all later